Your houses are so ugly, but that's okay, I can help you. Step one, build a box. Preferably a rectangular box and not a square one. Something roughly this size is fine. And make sure it's on the lowest wall height too. Step two, add modules. What I mean by modules is little bits coming off of the outside of the main box. Roughly at the front of the house, you wanna have a four by three module on either the left or right hand side. On one of the sides, have a module that pokes out quite a bit and on the other side perhaps have a smaller but wider module. The actual sizes don't matter as long as you've got at least one biggish one at the front on either the left or right and you have at least one on one of the sides. Step three, add the upstairs. For this you want to duplicate the main box by clicking the copy tool and popping that at the top making sure that it's directly in line with the underneath one and then the front module again you want to copy it and pop it on top too. By the way in order to see the upstairs you have to hit page up. If you're ever wondering what the shortcuts are. Simply hover over them at the top AI bar and you can see it says page down or page up. And that's for all of the tools if you want to know how to find the shortcuts. Step four, the roof. Everyone hates roofs, but I promise you they are so easy. So for the main module box at the top, you want to go for the gabled roof. You can rotate it using the left and right triangular bracket keys and you want to make it horizontally across the main bit of the roof. You then want to grab a second one and you want to do the same but across the bit coming out here. Of course, there's an ugly gap here, so we wanna drag it across to cover it. Now, if you do that, you can see that the wall here clips through. This is slightly complicated, but I promise it's not that hard. In order to deal with this, the first easy method is simply to drag it all of the way across and making a roof section like this, which does look natural. The second option is bring the roof back down, duplicate this roof, and bring it over to the next section, just enough to cover it where it needs to go. And then with this smaller arrow key, you can simply bring this up and it hides the eave over there. When you bring these up and down, you can either make the eaves longer or shorter. Of course, there is a tiny bit of clipping, but this is totally natural and it's just a regular part of the game. For the modules, you've got two options. For these bigger modules, I actually recommend putting another gabled roof just like this. For smaller modules like this, I actually recommend recommend the half gabled roof. It just looks a lot more natural, especially when you just bring it down slightly. Next, we add a half gabled roof for the downstairs part. Of course, we've got to hit page down so we can see the grid below. Add a half gabled roof and place it along here, bring it right down and just drag it into the position over here, which will be our decking. At this point, you can see the roof is clipping through over here. Again, you can grab this tool, but when you bring it in, as you can see, it actually affects both sides. So to make sure you only bring the eave in on this side, just hold the shift key and drag it in and it won't drag this one in. Another alternative method, which I much prefer, is to actually bring this top module in slightly and the roof in and actually just dragging this all the way across and then bringing the eave in slightly holding shift on this side just to make it a little bit more dynamic. Next, we add a roof trim using this tool here. I personally just recommend using a white one. There are very many different ones different thicknesses. I quite like this square roof trim here. I think it looks quite natural but honestly just use anything. The key with roofs is do not overthink it. Next we add a chimney. Go on to roof sculptures. Get this base game one here and just chuck it down. Again don't even overthink where you're placing it. Just place it and then it's done. Step five the porch. Under the walls and empty room section choose this orangey beigey colored one and flat square. You just want to place it underneath and drag it across the front. With the arrows, you can actually bring it up really, really high, or you can even make it even lower. For the perfect house, bring it up by one, two clicks exactly, no more, no less. Then of course, we wanna place the stairs. Again, just go for a basic set of stairs. I actually like to place the stairs relatively next to the big module coming out and usually make it two or three spaces wide. Then of course, we have to pick a fence. I usually like this one here, but honestly, any of the base game ones are fine and they should automatically apply to the walls as long as you have this version selected. Next, try to find some matching stair railings. Then you can add some columns. This one from the base game, Ansley Square Column, I think is perfect. And you just want to add this to the top of the stair railings on the corner. And if you want to, you could always add one in the middle if you have a central section. Mine is uneven, so I'm not going to because it can't be placed directly in the center. But if you have a central one, feel free to do it. Next, we have to add foundation 
foundations. Clicking foundations here, you can actually change the way the front Porsche looks with very different design choices. I personally love the Love of Lattice foundation. As you can see, it only applies to this section here, and that's because The Sims 4 has a room tool mechanic. As you can see, every time you add a module, it highlights as its own separate room. This is a fundamental feature of The Sims 4 build mode. When you're adding features like foundations, they will only apply to one room, and you actually have to do each different room separately. So to make sure that you have the rest of the house covered, I actually like to use the woody one. Oh, that's a bit sexual. <laughs> and you have to apply it to every individual room to change them separately. And of course, make sure you do plan a way to get into the back garden too, or the yard, I should say. I usually like to just put mine at the back right of the house and I make it a two by two. Using the eyedropper tool, which is up here, or you can press E on your keyboard, I also like to just copy the stairs and copy all of the design straight over. I also think this is a good opportunity to add another half gabled roof, just to make it a lot more natural natural. Time for step six, the layout. So now we have the basic shell on the outside. We need to work on the inside. Firstly, I think it's important just to select a front door. I usually like the two tiled base game door, this one here, and I usually try and pop it in the middle of the stairs. And that just gives us an indication of where the hallway is going to be. Usually when placing stairs, it can be quite difficult, but try and place it in the hallway. And a really great tip for your layout is to leave exactly two tiles just in front of it and I'll show you why in a moment. A lot of people like to do open banisters and things like this. Again, me being British, I like to do it the very easy way of just popping a wall around it, going upstairs and doing the exact same thing. And this will just make it so much easier because yes, this is a simple house. Next up, this area behind the wall, we actually want to make a two by three room and this is gonna be a downstairs bathroom. Going upstairs as well, you wanna try and get a similar size one. As you can see, my house is only seven tiles wide so I'm actually going to do the exact same thing upstairs too. For the downstairs I'm actually going to remove all of these separate module rooms and make them into one whole room. You can do that by holding the wall tool and holding down the control key to delete it. You can also use a sledgehammer tool which involves holding down K and just deleting all the walls that way. From here just imagine different rooms coming out of the hallway. Feel free to make the rooms totally separate or combine them together however you like. I'm just going for this basic design here now. Now. For this room, I'm going to make it more open plan, but I actually feel like this three by three area here is too small. So I'm actually going to bring it out just by one at the back. So of course, I do have to, of course, change the roof here too. For the upstairs, you want to do something similar, but for the upstairs, I actually recommend having one large room and two smaller rooms. Obviously, consider where you're going to put the doors when you do it. For this house, I've gone for a large room, a medium room, and a tiny room. Step seven, doors and windows. For the interior, I actually just recommend this base game door here in one of the wooden swatches. Try to keep the door central if you can. And for the bathroom door that's two by three, this one must go directly in the central grid and I'll show you why later. Exactly the same for the upstairs. Try your best to keep it central. So when it comes to window placement, a lot of people freak out. The trick is don't worry too much. Look at a real life house. Windows are weird in real houses and in The Sims 4 they're exactly the same. The biggest mistake I see is people trying to make things that are way too symmetrical and it just looks very odd. Instead, start from the front. For this front module coming out the Porsche, you want to do something very, very big and bold, such as this base game one here I quite like. Same for the upstairs. For the top central box, I actually like to use a smaller version of this one. Try and keep it symmetrical, but don't worry too much if it's not. Less is more when it comes to windows. Again, for the back of the house, I'm just just going to do something similar with these two windows. I'm going to pop another one here too. Again, it's not symmetrical, but trust me, it does not matter. I also want to pop a window here too, but I feel like this module is too long. So I'm actually just going to bring this module in and then I feel like it just fits a lot better. I'm also popping another one in a similar place on the other side too. For the actual roof itself, one really great option is to take the pessimist porthole window and actually just pop it at the top. It doesn't always work. I don't think it works with mine, but it does work with some builds. For the downstairs at the front, I actually like to use this longer window here, and I actually just like to pop a couple trying to be symmetrical. Then for the downstairs modules, I do like to do a similar thing and use these style windows here. I'll pop one directly in the middle of the bathroom. Of course, we cannot forget the back door. I usually just like to use a slightly different one
one from the front door one and just pop that in the middle. Of course, with a kitchen space, there's not actually gonna be that much room for windows. So just pick one small area of the kitchen area to have a window and put it there. Again, don't overthink your window placements. Yes, they may be uneven. Yes, they may look a bit weird, but trust me, it's completely fine. All houses are like this. Step eight, exterior decoration. Now we've got the basic shell of the house. Of course, we actually have to add design. Under walls, go to siding. I usually like to choose one of these two here. There are ones which come with a corner piece, as you can see, but try to avoid these ones and actually just go for the standard two here. Try to go for a lighter neutral color. When it comes to placing walls, you can place them individually or there are two other options. Firstly, hold the shift key and that will just apply the paint to the room itself that you have. As you can see now, I've got rid of the wall between here. The room is this entire section. So when I hold shift key, it will apply the paint to the entire section. The second option is to hold the alt key and that will place walls only across the same length of a room. What we're doing is actually just placing our siding along the main box itself, but not any of the modules. And again, with the upstairs too. To paint the roof, by the way, just hover over it and click it and it applies on both sides. Now for the modules themselves, it's actually nice to do something a bit different. So go over to masonry. In the base game, you'll have these first two ones. I recommend using one of these just to add a little bit more character to your build. Try using a color wheel to determine what swatch you should use. As you can see, orange and blue are on opposites. Because my house does have blue siding, I actually think a more orangey tone brick wall would be really nice. And you just want to apply this over to the modeled areas here. By doing this, it can give your house so much more depth. And I honestly recommend experimenting with color designs too. If you find the difference quite striking, don't be afraid to make your house a lot more neutral. As you can see here, using white on gray here is much more muted, but again, it just makes the house pop out a lot more. Obviously now I've done this, as you can see, it looks very odd here. So I'm actually gonna go back and look at the window placements and just bring this one in and bring this one in. Going back to the column tool, you can actually place a column up here and just drag it all of the way up. And that just helps to separate the area out so it doesn't look as striking. In fact, I may probably just remove this window here and pop it over here instead. Next, we need to change the roof by going over to the roof patterns. I personally love this one here and I love it usually in this grayish shade here. I just think it looks really, really natural and really, really suburban. And then of course we go over to floor patterns and we choose a wooden plank for the outside. I actually quite like this one here just because I think it's quite realistic for an exterior, but you choose whatever you wanna choose. Of course, don't forget to do it on the opposite side too. Next, we have to add a garden fence. I've chosen quite a big lot, so mine's gonna be huge. So I'm actually just gonna bring the house forward. If you click on the move house tool and click on move lot, you can actually just move the entire thing forward. And then that way we can have a much bigger backyard. For the back of the house, I recommend using a simple fence. Make sure you click on place fences by drawing so you can draw it freehand. Now, if you drag from the house to the outside, you can see that it brings a foundation along with it. But when you drag from the outside to the inside, it doesn't bring the foundation. So make sure that you do drag from the outside to the inside. I'm actually gonna start from where this pillar is here and just drag it in. Although I'm gonna pretend I'm building on a smaller lot because this lot's quite big. So for argument's sake, I'm just gonna pretend the garden ends here. Some people like to add a picket fence to the exterior of the lot. I personally find it looks a little bit too busy, but you can do it if you want to. Of course, do not forget a gate into your back garden. That is very important. For the flooring, you've got two main options. You can either go onto stone and pick some nice stone tiles to lead up to your house, but obviously it has a very hard edge. So I actually personally like to go over to terrain tools, go over to stone and pavement, and I actually click on the cobble together and just drag it across sideways to make it a bit more wishy-washy and natural. I also like to make the circular brush smaller and just bring it around as well to the back gate too. To make it obviously look more pretty, we can use plants. I usually like to place a tree just in the empty corner of the lot and perhaps another smaller tree in the other corner. Leading up to the house by the flooring, I would actually go over to shrubs and choose some different shrubs. This is where we start to learn our first ever build cheats. So we hit control shift C, type BB dot, move objects on. Without this cheat, if we try and place the shrub too close to here, the game says, no, thank you, not for me. With the cheat on, you can place anything anywhere. Now, obviously everything moves on a tiled grid, which is annoying. So hold the alt key on your keyboard and it moves a lot smoother and it can move anywhere. Another great cheat is if you find 
that something is too big, for example, this bush, you can use the left and right bracket keys to change the sizes. I'm gonna make this bush one tile smaller and I'm just gonna pop it here. I might pop another similar one here as well. A great tip for placing plants is using the trio method. So you wanna place one, place another one at a different angle and place another one. The third one, you wanna size it down with the bracket key, perhaps change a couple of these swatches and it just creates a really nice trio of plants that look together really nicely. Using the low lying plants as well is a really great way to fill up space, especially if you hold the alt key and free place them. Feel free to experiment with any design that you like. Again, don't overthink it, just plop things down. Real life gardens are messy. I personally like to use a bit of lavender, firstly to save the bees and secondly just to fill up the front porch. I think it looks nice, but you do it however you want to do it. To make it more realistic as well, you can use more ugly things like this unkept shrubbery bush because let's be honest, in the corners of your house, you're probably not really going to care that much in real life. Just make sure when you alt place things down, you don't clip in through the wall too much and you bring it out enough. A lot of people like to use the square flower beds. I personally just find they look extremely unnatural and very grid-like. Instead, go for placing more of the wildflowers like here. And again, don't be afraid to size them down to make them smaller. And again, sticking with the trio method of popping three things down in the same area honestly makes a really big difference. Also choosing these daisies here and just popping them under and around trees also makes them a lot more natural too. Next we need to go back to terrain tools, go over to grass and flowers and choose do or die. Placing this under the plants just adds a brown underlay which just makes them a lot more realistic looking. Make sure you pop them under the trees as well. I personally like to keep my backyards a lot less cluttered because I usually like to fill them with gameplay objects so usually I actually like to choose the oak tree and pop that one down or if it's too big perhaps this mesquite tree is that how you pronounce it just to fill the space as with most things don't overthink it step nine interior design so first we're going to start by placing all of the basics and then we'll move on to the details later firstly i actually recommend going in with a wooden floor plank any is fine make sure you hit the g key to turn off the ugly grid and i actually just place the same floor planks in every single room apart from the bathrooms now if you do want to change the direction of the floor planks use the triangular bracket key and you can actually change it holding the shift key to change the entire floor at the same time for walls again i like to just go over to paint and choose something very neutral i actually like to go to perhaps one of these two here basic pastels and just choose a beige swatch just so i have a blank canvas to work with starting off with the hallway i think the most first and most important thing always is lights usually i like to use a ceiling light for down here this area is way too small but for the upstairs i think we could probably get away with with one. Again, don't overthink it because you're not going to notice when you're playing the game. I actually like this Campanulet ceiling lamp. That was difficult to say. Try and pop it in the center, but again, it doesn't matter too much. If you have an awkward space, which is not lit very well, I actually recommend using a wall light instead and just filling the area that way just to make it a lot more naturally lit. If you do have a big open space in a hallway, go over to surfaces and go over to accent tables. Try and find perhaps a long thin table and I just think these look really really nice just to fill the awkward space. Next up is a kitchen. I'm actually going to do my kitchen on this side here. I usually like to do it where the back porch is. When it comes to counters make sure you click on the swatches and click on this tog and this will allow you to use different kind of counter placements wherever you like. Firstly I actually just like to chuck a load of counters down everywhere I think they might be able to work. Don't worry too much about fitting in a fridge or an oven because you can just delete counters as you go along. Next Next up, head over to cabinets and put on a matching cabinet too. Again, you can actually change these using the cog. Of course, making sure that you use the appropriate ones depending on where it is along the wall. Now we have this basic layout. I think it's important to think about where you're actually putting a fridge. I usually like to pop mine in the corner. So I'm actually just gonna delete this here and then put a fridge in. As you can see, the fridge is actually clipping through the cabinet. So I'm actually going to delete this cabinet and instead use the half tile one in its place. The same for the oven. I'm actually thinking of putting the oven right here. So we're going to pop a half tire one there too. Make sure of course you also use an oven hood. I like this one, the Noblis, and just pop it straight over here as well. If you have any big open spaces in your kitchen that you want to fill, you can actually go back over to cabinets and choose the long one here. And you can actually just place it down as if it were a cupboard and it just helps to fill up the space. Depending on how big your house is, you might want to do 
do matching counters to go in there. I actually think my house is too small for these, so I'm not gonna bother this time. Of course, we do need a sink. I personally like to make this sink relatively close to the window. In fact, I might actually just move the window here. Yes, I know it's not even on the outside, but trust me, it doesn't matter. I'm also gonna use this as an opportunity to place a microwave down over here too. And of course, do not forget the fire alarm so your sims do not burn. Oh, and don't forget a bin because we always forget bins in The Sims 4. I usually like to just free place it using the alt key right next to the door here just so it's out of the way. Because this is a basic home, I'm actually not gonna have a massive dining room. Instead, I'm just gonna have a table in here. If you have a small kitchen, you might just wanna use a little one like this or you can use a much bigger one. It's your choice. I think I'm gonna use a bigger one. When it comes to putting lights in a kitchen, I actually find it looks really nice to put a scene light in the middle of the dining table. For me, that'll go just here. If you find that some areas may be poorly lit but you don't want to use a wall light, this is where the subtle saucer light comes in because it's so small but it fills a lot of light in the indiscreet places. To make it look even more discreet, use a left bracket key to size it down as we did with the plants and it makes it just look really, really small and you can even hide it in the middle of objects as well. Of course, I do think I am going to change the colour swatches of this just to make it a little bit more homely. You can apply this to individual items by the way holding the R key or clicking on the design tool and that will just allow you to change it to any color that you like. Whilst we're here I think I'm also going to change the wallpaper design on here actually just to make it a little bit more homely perhaps countryside looking. I quite like this one from the base game. A lot of people are scared of big open spaces in The Sims 4 and think oh I've got to fill this hole. Not every hole has to be filled. <laughs> I mean, it's nice to fill some holes, but in regards to The Sims 4, not every empty space needs to be filled with something. Be comfortable with an open space. Next, we have the living room. As you can see, my living room is pretty huge, so I'm probably gonna have to do something else with the area in here too. I'm also gonna pop a window here just for now, just to help to fill out the space. The trick to doing living rooms is to firstly, start with the TV above everything else. Looking at the windows here too, now we've placed the TV. I feel like they look a bit weird, so I am just gonna change them up slightly, perhaps make it a bit more central to the TV. Again, on the outside, this looks much better too. Now we've got the TV down, we can actually place the sofas around it and we use the three, two, one method. What I mean by that is get a three tile sofa, a two tile sofa, and then a one tile chair. You want the three tile sofa directly in front, the two tile one on the side, and then the chair on the other side too. Don't be afraid as well, just to change around with the room layout, just to see which works best. I actually like it this way, but I think the door's in the way a little bit. Can we move that in? Yes, we can. It does make it look a lot better, but then the front door looks a bit off place. So I'm actually just gonna move the front door here. Again, changing things up is completely fine. It doesn't look too bad from the outside. You will find in The Sims 4 that you will actually just be moving things around a lot and that's completely okay. Not like you could do that in a real life house. That would be really dramatic, but in The Sims 4 you can. And now that just looks a lot more spacious and we have a lot more room to work with. Next of course we just need a coffee table in the middle. I also like to fill the space as well with a free place lamp as well. If you do have room you can consider using an end table in the corner too and of course it's nice to center it together with a rug. For the more miscellaneous space that we haven't used up I actually love to use bookshelves. Unfortunately the base game ones are quite ugly but I'm sure there's something you can find and use. For now I'm just going to use a smallish one here. Another really great way to fill the space space is with a desk. Depending on how small or big it is, you might want to tuck the desk right in the corner. I usually try and like to make my desk facing outwards just because I think it looks a lot nicer, but if you don't have the room, don't worry too much. Again, thinking about lighting, perhaps pop a small light on the desk too. And if you have enough room, you may even want to place a hobbies activity such as an art easel in the corner if you have the room as well. Again, make sure you go for a nice light. For the living room, I actually like to use this pendant lamp here just because it's very comfortable looking. Pop one in the middle where the coffee table is. Fill up the spaces with perhaps a wall light and the awkward corners with the subtle saucer light. And again, thinking about it, I actually want to have a nice window here too. Another great tip is just to use these long thin tables that we use in the hallway and also pop these down in any awkward corners that you have too. But again, don't be afraid of open space. Not every hole is a goal. I mean, if you think of real life houses, all of us dream of having less clutter and have nice open spaces. So don't worry too 
too much. And yes, we will be decorating it all later on. Next up, we've got the bathroom. So of course, use a floor tile for this one. I normally just like this white one here. For the wall, I know it's really, really tempting to use a matching wall tile, but trust me, it will look like a swimming pool. Instead, I actually like just to go for a plain white paint swatch or perhaps something a little bit more bluish if you fancy using it. The reason why I say pop the door in the middle is because it really helps to save space in a bathroom. So you want to get the shower bath combo and pop that here. And for the other side, you want to use a toilet and you want to use a sink and everything fits in perfectly fine. Of course, add your mirror in there too. And this just makes great use of the space. Now for the upstairs bathroom, I'm going to copy and paste it over. Firstly, because I'm lazy. Secondly, there's just no need to design two bathrooms. It's too much mental effort. And for the bathrooms, I actually like to use the larger saucer light and just pop it straight in the middle. And I just think it looks quite realistic there. Next up, we have the bedrooms. Starting off with the master bedroom. Firstly, there is not enough light in here at all. I've actually duplicated these windows here just to add a bit more light in. I've just popped a similar one on the side here as well. Because this is quite a big room, I'm actually also going to add an ensuite bathroom here too. Again, me being lazy, I am just going to copy it over from the other ones. I know, I know, I know, but it is a simple house, so don't worry too much. When you have a bathroom like this, it kind of looks a bit awkward to have another window. That's why I like this light box window and just pop it at the top and it just subtly adds a way for ventilation to come in so your sims don't die of their own stinky poo smells. For the bed, I like to try and place it as central as possible, but I wouldn't worry too much if it's not, not totally central. Make sure you use a small chest of drawers either side. If you find that they're either too far away or not close enough, you can use the alt key. Then usually I actually like to place a shorter dresser at the end of the room. And then in any kind of awkward corner, I use a bigger one. Unfortunately, we only have a few base game closets, but I quite like this one here. It comes in enough swatches. To fill out the corners, you can use a really nice tall sanding mirror. And again, just use a rug to bring it together. If the rug is too big and there's no smaller ones, use a small bracket key just to make it a bit smaller too. For the lighting in a bedroom, again, I like to use a soft pendant light and I like to try and keep it as central as possible. Depending on how big your room is, you may also want to pop a small TV as well on the dresser if you fancy. Although mine is quite far away, so I don't think I will or they'd have eyesight problems. Depending on how big your house is, you may either have another medium or small size room. If it's a medium size room, again, you might just want to pop a double bed in. This room certainly has enough room for a double bed, so that's what I'm going to do. Again, following the similar design of just having a chest of drawers in front and then having a slightly larger dresser on either side just makes it a lot nicer. And basically just follow the exact same kind of process to make the room. Don't worry if it looks similar because you can change different color swatches. This room is a lot darker, whereas this room is a lot brighter. Also, don't be afraid to use the same lights in every room too. And now for the smaller room, you can either make this like a study or an office or you can make it a kid's room. I think I'll make mine a kid's room. For a kid's room, don't be afraid to make it look ugly. Real life kid rooms look really, really tragic and messy all of the time. So don't worry too much. In fact, I may even use a bunk bed in this room because that way we can cinch a nice little desk in underneath. But for now, don't worry too much about design of kid's room. I usually just try and get all of the functional objects in there, like the bookshelf and the teddies and the toys. And of course, a cute little rug. Next up is the backyard. Obviously mine is literally huge, but yours might probably be a lot smaller. Oh my God, that sounds like such a flex. Mine's bigger than yours. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. When it comes to gardens for a basic house, I like to keep it incredibly simple and just do a barbecue seating area. So you can use any of the base game barbecues. I usually like to place it near the front. I know it's tempting, but do not use a backyard table with a parasol because it looks very unrealistic. Instead, just use a much smaller one. Use a few garden chairs here and there. I also like to go back in with my terrain tools too and just bring out the cobbled area too. I know some people like to do normal floor tiles in their back garden but I just don't like the way it looks. So I prefer to go for the more cobbled aesthetic. Just with the front of the garden as well, just spend a little bit of time decorating the back garden too. I usually like to make my back gardens a lot less cluttered than the front, but that's just a personal preference. And again, don't be afraid to add a touch of realism. If you want an overgrown area where the lawn hasn't been mowed for years, add that in there. I think all of us realistically have a section of our garden that looks exactly like that. So I think it's funny anyway. 
Oops. Step nine, interior decoration. First up, as we did with the kitchen, I do like to change up the walls and flooring if appropriate. When it comes to color, we can also try and go for more complementary or even clashy colors to make it more interesting. I'm usually quite lazy and like to keep with the more beigey tone things myself, but feel free to go mental with color design. I've also decided just to change up my sofas as well. In real life, houses are quite random and not everything matches and to make your house more homely, don't feel like everything has to be perfect. With colors out the way, now it's time to move on to actual decorations. Firstly, plants. Use potted plants on the coffee tables, on the end tables, chuck some on the floor. When you have these long thin tables here, use the feng shui planter and pop them in the middle. Also, we can go over to sculptures and actually put some different sculptures down too. I love the twerking pig. It's my favorite object in The Sims 4. I always like to pop that one down. Adding some kitchen clutter as well. Sometimes you might find objects don't place where you want them to go. So just pop them where you can for now, just for this simple tutorial. Next, we want to move over to wall decorations. Try and pop a few paintings down in the awkward spaces in the wall. Don't be afraid to use the same paintings in multiple different areas. I've actually used this painting three times over and it actually helps the game to load faster when you don't have too many assets in the game. So don't be afraid to honestly just reuse the same thing over and over again. For the kitchen, I like this pot and pan set and I actually like to size it down and place it near the oven. I also like this base game cork board too and again I usually just size it down a bit and pop it in a corner somewhere. Next up is curtains. Curtains in the game can be very difficult to place. I recommend going for something actually quite colourful just to help bring the space out as you can see this room is quite green and orange. This Chartez Valance however you say that I think is quite good for a more subtle effect but you know what sometimes curtains just don't play ball and if you can't find any to use guys don't worry too much. I recommend looking through everything in the categories of the decorations section and just seeing what you think will fit in each room. Don't go for each room at a time because that can be a bit of a ball lake. Instead just look through the list and think oh this would look nice in this room, that would look nice in that room and that way it just makes it a little bit less overwhelming. On the outside too don't forget it maybe pop a few potted plants here and there. For the outside you can actually use these window boxes. As you can see I've placed some around all of my windows just to help to make the house look a lot more colourful and vibrant. And as I said before guys don't be afraid of open spaces that don't have anything in them. For me personally it's an absolute dream having a house with not much stuff in it so it honestly does honestly I think look a lot better when you don't fill out the space too much. If you do have any big empty spaces it can be nice just to put a little bit of a floor rug somewhere. I actually like to use this circular mat here just in front of the main doorway. Same for the back doorway too. Under a desk as well you might want to pop something. Also for the long thin tables like this using a small carpet underneath just helps to bring it together. I think it's important to remember that this is a simple base game house and it doesn't have to be over detailed don't worry too much. Now any eagle eyed viewers are probably thinking Satch you've left this big empty room here why did you do that? That's because when you play The Sims 4 you'll naturally start wanting to buy them some more hobby stuff and I think it's good to have an empty room just so that your sims can add more activities. If you have a fitness sim you might want to add some workout stuff in here. If you like sims who enjoy crafting you might want to pop a woodworking bench so I always actually recommend making one room completely empty just to allow you to do all of that but again that's your choice if you did want to you could fill the space as a study it's entirely up to you. If you would like a copy of this build for reference I will pop it on the gallery. Obviously this is a very basic Willow Creek style home. If you would like a tutorial for a basic modern home for example to go in Oasis Springs let me know and I'll honestly love to give it a go for you guys. Of course make sure you subscribe for some more tips for The Sims 4 and also make sure you check out the next crazy video here. See you in the next one.